one interesting thing to notice regarding the flat versus ball earth debate is that proponents of both models surprisingly agree on one very important point. Globe believers and globe deniers alike agree that there is an objective, empirical, testable and repeatable fact of reality known as level. We agree that the oceans, lakes, ponds, and other standing bodies of water on Earth are measurably level. We agree that the natural physics of water and other fluids is to find and maintain level. We also agree that instruments like plumb bobs, spirit levels, laser levels, theodolites, astrolabes, and sextants are able to accurately determine and measure that level. The only disagreement we actually have on this matter is the true meaning of the word level. When used as a noun, Merriam-Webster defines level as, quote, a horizontal condition, especially equilibrium of a fluid, marked by a horizontal surface of even altitude. A line or surface that cuts perpendicularly all plumb lines that it meets, and hence would everywhere coincide with a surface of still water. A practically horizontal surface or area of land. This definition makes it clear that the word level denotes a flat, straight, horizontal surface perpendicular to plumb. All architects and builders are well acquainted with and rely on this definition of level during their constructions, whether building huge warehouses, walls, or forts, long bridges, railways, or canals, finding and maintaining level is of paramount importance. When astronomers use the word level, however, they use a distinctly alternate definition from the noun described above. When used as an adjective, astronomers and Merriam-Webster redefine level to mean, quote, conforming to the curvature of the liquid parts of Earth's surface. In other words, this modified definition meant to work on a globe asserts that level actually means curved. This is patent absurdity and a paradox of pandemic proportions, but globe believers will all readily nod their heads in enthusiastic agreement that level means bent. In an age when the definitions of such obvious words as man and woman have somehow become highly divisive and debatable, it should be no surprise that the word level could also now have two completely opposite, mutually exclusive definitions existing in the same dictionary entry. Theoretical astronomers can redefine any words they like, but they cannot change the way our instruments work, nor can they change fundamental physical laws. When structures are built across vast expanses, precision leveling instruments are used to determine a meticulously calculated and diligently adhered to datum line. Even slight deviations from the datum cause catastrophic consequences, so careful precautions are always taken to ensure everything is perfectly leveled. If Earth was actually a globe of given proportions, however, structures just a quarter mile long would already deviate from the datum line by two inches. In other words, if level actually means curved, as globe proponents would have us believe, builders constructing a quarter mile wall, building, or foundation would have to factor a gradual two inch deviation from one end to the other just to maintain level. This is preposterous, and such theoretical considerations are never taken into account because they are practically useless and would ruin the project. Water itself is the ultimate leveling tool and has been used in construction for millennia. The surface of standing water is always perfectly flat because fluid molecules lack the ability to stack and so spread outwards towards the path of least resistance. Thus, when contained and undisturbed, fluids maintain a level surface with equal altitudes across the entire expanse. You have never and will never see the surface of standing water bend because it is physically impossible. This is precisely what theoretical astronomers propose, however, that the world's oceans, lakes, ponds, and all other bodies of water on Earth are actually slightly bent. In defiance of any practical measurements and millennia of successful constructions, they believe all standing bodies of water somehow curve around and stick to a spinning ball, and have recently redefined the word level to fit with their absurdity. The two definitions are mutually exclusive, though. 
level either means a horizontal surface of even altitude, or a curved surface equidistant from a given center point. It cannot be both simultaneously, and only one definition is practically demonstrable. No scientist on Earth can provide a demonstration showing a standing body of water with a curved surface. They cannot make water wrap around and stick to a spinning sphere, nor can they explain how any leveling instrument supposedly factors curvature. Globe believers begin with their conclusion and attempt to work backwards towards their favored premise, creating such a theoretical mess as this debacle of curved level. It's like saying bent straight. There is good reason we call it sea level and not sea curve. The horizon is called such because it is always perfectly horizontal. How can you have a horizontal surface that curves? How can a straight line perpendicular to plumb ever be bent? If level means curved, then two objects at two different altitudes can still be considered level as long as they are equidistant from some curved reference frame. If level means curved, then all instruments used to determine horizontal datum lines are actually determining imperceptibly long bent lines, similar to when woman is redefined to mean biological males on estrogen pills, when level is redefined to mean curved or bent, the word itself loses all meaning. Level either means a horizontal surface of even altitude, or a curved surface of even altitude, and it cannot be both.